Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne with Back to Earth. Y'all have no idea how many times I've tried to shoot the intro of this video. <laughs> the dogs are playing inside today, so the video is going to sound as unprofessional as always. Um, but I wanted to show you guys how to make this pendant. Now, we've done tutorials on fractal wrap before, usually, which is what my partner and I call this style of kind of string art, but done with wire, just because it looks so, like, trippy. Um, usually, we we do, like, an edge where it's chain mail or where uh, we're using, like, a gear that we bought from the store, but here... I had used just a, a metal ring that, well, it's not welded solid, it's a steel that's like, it, it didn't wiggle around on me, it was not a, a soft metal ring, and a store-bought bail, and a couple of rings to join things together. But I want to figure out how to make the wire and the bail just out of, like the ring and the bail just out of wire. So what I'm using here is I have 16 gauge round wire. You could use 18 gauge as well. I really like the 16 just because it holds its shape and does what you want it to. And then this should be all I need, but some 26 gauge. And this is their uh, silver plated silver from parawire.com. And this is the silver plated titanium toned. Both of these are copper core, so they're very easy to work with, but you could use bare copper. You could use um, sterling, <clears throat> just whatever your, whatever your heart desires. And then here we have one of our handmade glass cabochons that we've been working on. And uh, I was going for like a cherry blossom thing, but it wasn't quite pink enough. So uh, in one of our recent live streams, y'all settled on Santa blood splatter. You're my favorite people. I hope you know that. Um, but it's just a little like rose petals let's go with rose petals or something <laughs> um but we have all sorts of different cabochons for sale on our website if you're interested in getting your hands on some of what we use in our own work but you could use any cabochon whether you've made it yourself out of polymer clay and resin or gemstones or um the the possibilities are endless here and then i am also using a size 8 seed bead um, and that's going to be what we do around the edge. You could use gemstones. You could, I mean, these are just what I am using, but the possibilities are endless with the variation that you can add just with different bead shapes and styles and colors. Now I do like seed beads for this because I'm going to see if you can, if we can zoom in a bit and you can see here how it is sitting, like it has almost the the beads are more of a tube shape than an actual proper round bead and i think that sits really nice and snug right up against the edge of our wire or what will be our wire and it's just i don't know it holds on to everything really well uh so i don't know if that translates perfectly to you know round beads and stuff also so that's why i've chosen seed beads here um but experiment and let me know how it goes and if you if you do want to do this style i will have links down in the video description there's going to be links for everything anyhow but i'll have links specifically to the chainmail kit that has all the different jump rings that i like to use as well as oh gotta go let the puppy out Alrighty, where were we um this is the chainmail kit that I get on Amazon that I really enjoy because it has all of these different sizes. So if you're new to making jewelry or chainmail, whether you're interested in making chainmail or not, this is still really handy to have just for having some really strong, durable, consistently sized jump rings to attach your work together. And then you like you can find out which jump rings you like the size and look and feel of the most and you can order more from, I like the ring board, but I also get rings um, that I don't, you know, if it's something that we're not just coiling and cutting ourselves. We also shop at um, Chainmail Joe, especially for bright aluminum. I really like the bright aluminum from Chainmail Joe. But, uh, so yeah, I just used whatever rings fit. I think both of these have the inner diameter of um, 3 sixteenths. I'm not certain what that is in millimeters, sorry, but this one's a 16 gauge and this one's an 18 gauge. Now, um, 
I don't want to confuse anybody, but there are uh, sometimes, like whenever I buy chainmail rings, they'll be listed in standard wire gauge, but then whenever I shop for wire, it'll be listed in American wire gauge. So that can get kind of uh, <laughs> confusing a bit, but so those two are standard wire gauge. Let's go ahead and get started. Oh, also, I will have linked the um, assortment kits or like the assorted packs of bales that I like to get uh, because that way you can get some really nice, interesting variation. But again, I'm going to be showing you how to make your own bale here. So let's go ahead and get started into it. Now, the only pliers that we're going to be using today are our, oh, dig that one out, round nose pliers for making spirals and stuff, wire snips for cutting the wire, and then um, if you're using any jump rings or anything at all. Uh, I like my just my bent nose pliers, but if you're doing jump rings, you will want some chain nose or flat nose pliers or another pair of bent nose to go with that. I'm going to measure off, gosh, I don't even think we need a full 12 inches, but I'm going to measure off a, a full 12 inches of wire. And we can use just about anything as a mandrel. Um, let's use, oh, here's a nice little, here's a cap of a lotion bottle. <laughs> now that's going to be a little large for what we're doing, but we can still just shape that around. And that makes quite a large loop, but that's okay. Probably one of my favorite things to use is just a little bead canister, but you'll wanna find something that's a very similar size to the cabochon that you'll be putting into your setting here. Also, um, this makes a wonderful uh, like tree ornament for the holidays if you're using like fish tank glass or something maybe that like the light goes through it um, and you can get those in a big old affordable bag full at like the dollar store in whatever colors you enjoy so again that's still just a little too large so now I'm going to try an even smaller and this is like thinner than a pill canister this is about 25 millimeters so one inch in diameter and we just shape that down and it's okay that it's doubled like uh, and, oh that fits perfect <laughs> so even though it sized up just a little bit like there was a little bit of spring back so it's not the exact same size as the mandrel it still worked out to be just about perfect <clears throat> and so from here I would like to do just a little bit of a spiral to support the back, though this is not completely necessary with the design that we're doing today. I still just like to do it. Oops, just set that off to the side. So I'm just grabbing with the tip of my pliers close to the tip of the wire, and I've made just a little closed loop. Like, that wire's butted up against itself just as well as it can. And then I'm going to spiral this in very very gently i am i do not recommend hammering if you haven't done any sort of wire weaving before um just because it can make the wire not want to slide as much as you know if you just leave the wire nice and round and so i've just positioned that in a way that i'm happy with it and then from here we can take our pliers and if you want your bale completely offset from the top there, like, you can kind of choose. I'm going to have my bale protrude from right here. So just doing a 90 degree bend, getting that up that way, out of the way. And then we will worry about the rest of our bale later. So now we can actually come through, and I'm going to open this up just a little bit to let us get our wire in there. I'm going to open up our beads. And I'm going to pull off, oh, about an arm span and a half. So it's five, eight feet 
of wire of our 26 gauge now you could use a 24 or a 28 as well i just like the 26 because well that's what i had um and now i'm going to come down here and i'm just gonna just here on the stem of what our bale will be i've got about an inch of overlap wire that i'm holding on to and we're gonna go one two three four five and we're gonna smush that down nice and tight and I'm gonna travel that down our wire. Just I try to fit in the easy wraps while I can. Okay, I'm gonna snip off that little tail. And let's go ahead and give that a little smush because I'm gonna zoom in here so that hopefully you can see exactly what it is that I'm doing. And you can see that little Please pardon my dirty hands. I was loving on the dogs and then playing in the garden. And there's just a little bit of wire poking up right there. And so I like to take my bent nose or any pliers really. And I'm just going to smush that down. Smush, smush, smush. And I'm doing just a very little like nibbling. There we are. And now there's no little pokey bits. So now we have our wire right there. And so I'm going to wrap. And I just like to grab and then pull through. And then we're going to wrap. So let's do three wraps. And this is going to join our ring. Two. And then one more. Oops. Now sometimes you'll get little kinks in your wire. And that's okay. If you find it happening, just gently unkink it. And there's our third wrap. And we're just going to pull that through. So now that's one around just the one. And we pull it through again. And you come by any weird little like bends in the wire where it feels like it's trying to misbehave. Uh, just be patient with yourself, be patient with the project. So there's two repetitions. And I like to just push through with my finger from behind and then pull through. Be very mindful of the flying loose ends of the wire. Uh, don't let it like don't don't get so rushed that it's whipping around uncontrolled and so i used to try to find the end of the wire and thread it through like a needle but it works i think so much easier to just kind of press it through the middle so we've done five rotations around and i'm going to pick up a bead now this is a silver lined red transparent and I like it, it makes it just a little bit of sparkle to it. And I've just threaded that onto the end of my wire. Coming around time. I prefer to not bobbin up my wire uh, for this project just because, um, I mean, unless it's a bobbin that fits through right there, then I, I just don't wanna not be able to thread my wire through somewhere because it's all encased on a bobbin so there's one and you can see hopefully that I just have the flat side of that bead resting against our wire and if we, we I want to follow the same path that our wire was taking anyways so there's one bringing it around pressing through grab and pull there's two Three, four, and five. Give it a smoosh. And then I like to end with where I've trained the wire to where it is like up. <laughs> so now we're going to zoom back out. Whoops. 
It can be a little clumsy. Normally with projects like this, this is exactly when I would roll my chair back into the middle of the room so there's no furniture or tripods or anything for me to get tangled on. But here we are. So I'm going to thread a bead onto our wire and let it travel all the way down. I've probably given us more wire than what we need, but <laughs> it is what it is. Okay. So now I'm going to do this again, zoomed in this time. So we have our wire traveling around, we've threaded the bead on it. And then I just make sure that it's laying just as a nice little edge. So there's one. Two. Three. Four. and then finish it to where it's going towards the top give it a good smush now you can add all sorts of interesting variation by um, you know, making the beads closer or farther apart um, but I like just doing five it's just a nice round number <laughs> um, and we are going to continue this all the way around the edge of our ring. So just threading on a bead. <clears throat> so if you're watching this in the premiere, we're going to be doing some magic of editing and I'm going to be just jumping on ahead until we've gotten to about here um, with doing the bead edging. But if you're watching this uh, just in the replay, which hey everybody in the premiere chat, I hope you're having a good day. Um, if you're watching this in the replay, go ahead and give it a pause. I will pause the video and um, keep weaving. Like, keep just wrapping around. There's three, four, <clears throat> excuse me. Five. And if I lose count and my eyesight is not what it used to be, so I just zoom in. Hopefully it's not too blurry. Yeah, I need to do one more. So I, I use my camera way more than I use any sort of magnifying glass or anything like that because I'm usually set up with my tripod right here anyways. Okay, so yeah, we're going to continue repeating this all the way around. I will meet you guys back here for that. Alrighty, let's check in and see how we're doing. So to get, for me, whenever I'm looking for like to get good results and what I mean by good results is you know something that looks like how I wanted it to um, I, I look at mostly just the consistency of the piece you know are my if my beads are all more or less the same size and are all sitting like situated in the same orientation like face in the same way um, then that really helps you know just the overall look of cohesion and consistency using the same number of coils in between each bead and then here at this part I'm going to zoom in again if you can see I'm trying to be consistent about whenever I do my little smush right here I'm trying to keep those spaces consistent because if I smush too hard I can actually go up underneath the bead and that is okay but if you're doing that be consistent about it and if you don't quite mean for that to happen, just don't push quite so hard. And the more you practice, and I know that's, that's the last thing anybody wants to hear. Like, I've just started trying to learn how to oil paint. And, like, <laughs> I'm terrible at it. Um, which is, you know, kind of how you're supposed to be whenever you're starting something new. But I'm, like, trying to... Uh, you know, practice all the things I've been teaching, being patient with myself, with the project, with the process, um, and to just, you know, practice. And nobody ever wants to hear that you're going to have to practice a whole bunch and then practice a whole bunch even more. But the good news is, is with crafting and with most things, actually, practice is a lot of fun. 
it's uh if you fully embrace the mess and the chaos and just have fun learning and experimenting we may with any sort of luck we may never be this bad at wire wrapping or oil painting or whatever it is that we're trying that's new we may never be this bad at it ever again um but it's I don't know it, it's a lot of fun and I, I'm kind of addicted to learning new things uh craft wise and just seeing how they meld together and it's the whole process is a whole lot of fun so don't let a pursuit of perfection deny you the fun of being just terrible and new at something <laughs> like you know nobody's expecting perfection right out the gate maybe you should cut yourself a break says I to myself who's still mad about my last oil painting but that's fine <laughs> so it's you know sometimes we have to practice the mindset as well so it's not enough to just practice the craft but you got to practice the mindset too even more practice so there's three four and then one more with five now there's a million different roads to get to a finished piece. And we could have put off doing this initial join just to make it easier on ourselves to you know weave and scooch it around. But I wanted to be able to do a little bit of a double up and have a really nice strong join there. So I'm not I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to tell you why I'm doing what I'm doing because then you can cherry pick my reasonings and motivations and you know solutions uh, to your own project. And y'all are so clever and crafty anyhow. I'm sure you're going to think up all sorts of different ways to utilize this in your own work. And if you if you follow along with any of our tutorials or use any of like our cabs or something in your own work, please do uh, tag us on Instagram or post it to our Facebook wall so that we can see what you're up to. Y'all inspire me every day just with how clever you are. So... Uh, also, we fully invite you, if you follow along with our tutorials, please, please feel free to sell your creations. Uh, you know, like, no limits. You can, I mean, do the tutorial exactly, you know, step by step. <laughs> and uh, I feel like you bought the wire, you had the beads, it's your hands that are a little sore at the end of the project. It's yours now. Go forth and do whatever you would like with it. My only request is that if somebody, you know, is asking like, oh, wow, how'd you do that? Just pass on the love of crafting and the love of learning. So we'll get folks, you know, emailing us, asking us if they can sell our designs. And I'm like, I don't feel like any of these are my design because we, we all stand on the shoulders of the giants who came before us. I did not invent wire. I did not invent spirals. I did not invent beads. This is just a way that I'm bumping around doing things. And, uh, and also I'm really bad about replying to my emails. So I don't want y'all like being considerate and sending me an email and then me taking weeks and weeks to get back to you. So just telling you on the front end go ahead go forth and do the thing now we are also open to uh, requests for future tutorials as well so if you guys have any ideas that you'd like us to try our hand at you can always send us an email though it does take me a minute to get back to you I will get I will try my best to get back to you <laughs> um, okay so now here I am going to start wrapping around both wires. So let's go ahead and put another bead on. Sliding that all the way down the wire. I really could have gone with just probably five feet of wire and not you know worried so much about having all of this extra. Sometimes it's nice to have a little extra, except for whenever it starts making me crazy. So yeah, I'm actually going to snip it here right before this little kink in the wire. And I'll try to remember, if Future Vaughn recalls, which Future Vaughn is wildly unreliable, um, I'll put down in the video description, you know, just five feet of wire to start with. But I thought at the start of this project that I was going to be doing a woven bale. But I think if we do that, we'll just add, we'll just splice in some fresh wire because it's so much easier not having to pull all that extra wire through. So there's three, 
pressing through, four, pressing through, and five. And now I do want to get in here and just use my bent nose pliers to give it a smush and hopefully hold everything nice and where it goes. And then we're going to slide on another bead. I know I'm out of frame, but I'm just letting the beads slide down the wire. And then I like to use my fingers like a little sandwich to keep the bead on the edge of the wire while I pull the wire, the well, on the edge of the core wire while I pull our weaving wire tight. So there's one, passing through, two, passing through, three, passing through, four, passing through, and five. Those are smushed together pretty hard shoulder to shoulder, but uh, there we go. I'm just using my fingernails to kind of push the wire around. Uh, if you don't have much fingernail to work with, or they're like, I'm very fortunate that my nails are quite strong, um, so I'm able to use them as a tool, but you can always just use your pliers and just kind of get in there and kind of scooch things around and stuff, or you could use, um, you know, like a cuticle pusher tool is actually really great for getting in there and kind of pushing the wire around, so uh, if there's a crafter, there's a way, we'll figure something out. I'm going to thread on, I think we can only fit maybe two more beads. Letting that travel down the wire. So now we're coming into the realm. Let me get zoomed in. Okay, so we're zoomed in here. And we're going to start layering our wrapping over what we had already wrapped. So that's where our wire's sitting on the back there. And then we're going to wrap up and over, hooking on that first little wire, then coming around. And then we're going to skip one and go in between. And you could, you, I don't know if you could hear that little click almost of the wire just settling in. But now I'm counting, so we've got that one, two, three, four, and then one more is going to be five. So even though we haven't done five full coils, the space that is taken up by the coils that we're skipping is going to help keep our spacing. So this is going to be our last bead. I know I'm out of frame. But yeah, I don't even know if you can see, but like, my is just dangling off the desk down here. I grab a bead thread it on and then just let gravity do the work so that's just, that's all that's going on off frame zooming in and then we're gonna get this positioned just so so that hopefully and they're a little offset and I mean that's not the end of the world it's not my favorite but it's not the end of the world okay and we're just coming around and now I am just going to spiral this, or coil it rather. So let's zoom back out. And I like to just hold my fingers here onto the thing. And I always get folks being like, well, why don't you use a drill right now? And it's like, well, it, I think it's a good idea to be well practiced and just using your hands. And not everybody has a drill, you know, uh, whenever they're getting started into wire wrapping. <clears throat> and uh, so it's kind of, I, I, I think a person uh, should grind out the skill set and get in pretty, as good as they can at doing coils by hand and then, you know, use the drill as a shortcut, you know, whereas you might be shortchanging yourself a little bit if you just skip directly to a drill. Because, and honestly, of all the times right now, we could just chuck this into a drill and like, but it would be a little finicky and stuff. So what I'm doing is I just, I'm gripping with my finger and thumb to hold the wire so that it's layering to make, you know, we want it 
layering in the same direction not overlapping itself and then I'm just turning this like a like a little key or a crank or something and that's just helping us to get the wire around and that's a fair bit of wire too we can also do this on the other side sometimes I'm a little more competent with one hand or the other or one hand will just get tired oh my goodness that's a lot of coiling coil 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 there we go just using my finger <laughs> like oh. <laughs> yes. I need to get out more that's fine now also we can just coil like this just bringing it around and I'm just gonna keep turning until we've got that last little bit Oop. and now we've got that little pokey end and I'm just gonna use my bent nose pliers or any pliers to just smush that on down now we could technically this could just be done because I think that's super cute if we had just finished it with like a little loop or something like this is a super cute earring or pendant or whatever we have going on But now we get to turn it into where it's holding a cabochon. Now this next step is a great uh, time to go ahead and have your wire on a bobbin if you're into that. I'm going to use up the rest of what I have on that spool. And I'd like to come in here off the side. So I'm going to take about two inches of this tail wire and I'm bringing it across the top here because I want to be able to splice it in with the other wire that we have on here. So if you can see, I have that wire just laid in and then I'm going to bring it up and in between. And if you keep it going in the same direction, like apply it in the same direction as what we did initially, it will actually disappear between the other bits of wire. Now you can see how that one crossed over just a little. We just scooch it and it settles right on in. And right there's a skill that I don't think... Uh, I would have ever developed if I had just hopped right to using a drill. No hate on drills though. Super, super useful. I just get a lot of questions about it and I think right out the gate um, when you're learning something new, um, it, should, it should be about uh, you may benefit in the long term from grinding out the skill as opposed to immediately resorting to shortcuts. <clears throat> okay, oh. well I used up the rest of the wire and you can kind of see where it spread like where it, it finished because it leaves a little bit of gap in the wire that's okay though and so now we're going to come around and this is very similar concept to the fractal wraps um, that we've done in the past but I'm just going to come I don't want to be so close to the edge that it's not going to make much of a frame but I also don't want to be cutting straight across the middle so I like right here looks pretty good so that's one two three four five six seven eight beads that I've skipped and then I'm gonna wrap right there and then I just come up around there and then I'm going to so if we started on this bead then I'm gonna hook around this one and then I'm gonna come on down and hook around that one come on up and hook and down and hook and up and hook and I'm just wrapping around this frame that we've made. And then once we get just a few more wraps in, I'm going to go ahead and insert my cabochon. 
because it's made a little bit of where it'll just hold and then wrap because if you start without uh like just trying to juggle the cab in there right from the beginning it gets a little tricky but if you make a little bit of a pocket for it to nestle in then we can just keep working our way around and so changing kind of how it's held in my hands so we've hooked on we're gonna skip one two three four five six seven eight just like that wrap hook wrap and I'm just hooking around the bead itself and we're gonna continue this all the way around there's that one hooking hooking until we get right to where we began and we're gonna continue overlapping And just coming around. I really hope I have enough wire because otherwise we're going to have to figure out how to splice more in. <laughs> Which is not the end of the world, but it's also not what I wanted to do. And oh my gosh, we're no, we are so close. Oh my gosh, it's our last one though. Oh, we did it. We made it. <laughs> so we have that last little bit of tail of wire. Um, and I'm going to come up the same direction we've been coming this whole time and I am going to splice this in to the stem of that will become our bale same way that we did before so let's zoom on in and I'm going to hold on to this wire with my pliers and hopefully that'll keep my hand out of the way of the camera but and we can just hold this wire nice and tight and then turn the piece in our hand and this may be easier for you. So again, there's so many different methods that we can do to get the same end result. And just traveling around. And we can go ahead and, well, yeah. We could snip it. I'm also just gonna Smoosh. <laughs> there we are. And that splices it all oh, wandering all over the place. And so now that we have that stabilized, I'm going to make sure that our little edge here is nice and all laying in the same direction. And then we can start pushing this with our thumbs just to compress that design on the front just a little. And then that's how our back is looking. Now if you feel like you have any little bit of looseness, I like to take just one of the nose of my round nose pliers and I'm just going to hook on a little bit. and just bring it in towards the middle. I'm just isolating just a wire and then pulling it towards the center. And this is gonna help kind of tighten. It adds a little bit of tension. I don't wanna do too much, but just enough. And then just some good smushes. <laughs> and there we are. You can also have, well, it's really holding that stone in there, but you can turn the stone to have it oriented however you like. And now we could use a knitting needle, we could use a pen. I am going to use a stick mandrel on the six millimeter. And I am just going to wrap this around. And this is what I really like about using the 16 gauge is um, it really holds its shape. And that, oh, that worked out just perfect for the amount of coiling that's on there. So we've wrapped around and then I'm going to just bend this down that away and wrap it and 
just one solid wrap is I think all it takes. And now we could finish this into another spiral, if and as you want. But I'm just going to snip it. And then I'm going to get in here and I'm going to smush it. Being very careful to not smash my glass beads. And then I want to split those little bunny ears a little if we can. There we are. And there we have a wire wrapped pendant, you guys. I think that came out really cool. And so I finished this one in very similar fashion um, with kind of splicing the wire into itself. And then I covered that doubled area since it was a little bit wider between the two beads. Um, that's where I hooked on these two jump rings and then just attached a bail with another jump ring. So different folks like different looks. We could have also, um, let me know if you'd like to see more bail variations because we could have, instead of doing the spiral here, we could have had the wire come around and then what two ends of wire go off and we could have done like a figure eight or a corset, corset weave um, bail. So yeah, let me know if you guys would like to see another variation of this, but I had a lot of fun making it and I, I really hope that you liked it. Um, let us know down in the comments how you're doing, if you're crafting along with us, and uh, if you have any questions, comments, or ideas, that's the place to put them. You can also email us at backtoearthcreations at yahoo.com. And if you enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, as well as participate in our booty boxes or our after party live streams or our coupons or anything like that, uh, links to how to join our Happy Crafter Club or join our YouTube channel membership or anything like that are down in the video description. But uh, this is just so fun, you guys. I love this design. Like getting to wrap like that is so fun. Um, and I think while it can be a little intimidating, um, I can embrace the chaos and just practice, practice, practice. You'll get the hang of it. Until next time, you guys. Thank you for being here and happy crafting. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>